Hello, my name is Robert C. Gray, and I'm a PhD candidate in digital media at Drexel University. On behalf of my co-authors, I will be presenting our research on player modeling via multi-arm bandits for the 2020 Foundations of Digital Games Conference. Our research here offers two contributions. The first is an approach toward player modeling based on multi-arm bandits, or MABs, where we will demonstrate how we formulate a player modeling problem as a multi-arm bandit problem and use solutions from that field to both classify players and individualize a software experience for those players. Second, we demonstrate an approach for evaluating and fine-tuning our AI agent via simulation in preparation for a user study to maximize the value of that user study. But first, let's review some of our core concepts. Our main area of research is adaptive games, where we leverage knowledge of a player to change how a game functions to better serve individual players and specific design goals. This approach often relies on player modeling, where the game aims to understand characteristics of a player, such as their preferences or their capabilities, that can inform this adaptation process. Yanakakis and others have conceptualized player modeling approaches as being top-down, bottom-up, or some mixture of the two. In a top-down approach, knowledge of the domain informs the design of categories, and a set of heuristics devised by the authors of the model classify players into the pre-established categories. In contrast, bottom-up approaches are context agnostic, discovering the categories and classifying players via AI, machine learning, or other statistical analysis of player data. Our work is informed by both of these approaches, leveraging psychology theory to provide the domain in which we will distinguish players, but relying on AI techniques rather than heuristics to perform the classification task for the individuals. Specifically, we are aiming to distinguish players according to their social comparison tendencies. Social comparison is a psychological process by which people, consciously or unconsciously, compare themselves to others in order to assess their degree of success, plan for their future success, or to feel better about their current state or situation. It is believed that some people prefer to seek out comparisons to others who are doing better than they are, known as upward comparisons, because it inspires them and gives them insight into how they can improve, while others might generally tend to seek out comparisons with others who are not doing as well, known as downward comparisons, because it can boost their confidence or provide reassurance. This and other personal social comparison tendencies are collectively referred to as the person's social comparison orientation, or SCO. Our larger project is to design a game that motivates players to engage in real-life physical activity, or PA, and we believe we can leverage this phenomenon by modeling players according to their SEO traits, where we then offer an intervention by way of presenting comparison opportunities that will appropriately motivate individual players. We aim to do this by leveraging theory around multi-arm bandits. A multi-arm bandit problem is a type of sequential decision problem, where an AI agent, sometimes referred to as a bandit, must make a repeated choice among a set of actions, we'll call them arms, that each yield some unknown reward. The agent wants to maximize their total reward over a limited number of selections, but the reward for each arm is not known until it's selected, and the rewards can vary. The agent has to decide how to split its decisions between exploring the options to learn the reward distributions and exploiting the option it believes to be the best. And research in this field has found that, given the right strategy and enough time, the agent will eventually converge on the best option. Our approach takes advantage of this by setting up the categories of the player model as arms in the MAB problem, where each arm provides a different option for a game experience. Looking to resulting player metrics as a reward measurement, we allow the agent to converge on the arm that yields the best result for the player, thereby categorizing the player within the model. In this case, the method is the model, and the bandit is simultaneously the system that classifies players and the AI that adapts the game. But let's talk about some specifics. Our plan is to use such an AI agent to guide a daily web-based intervention that aims to increase players' daily steps and motivation to engage in PA. A player logs onto a website and reports on their current PA motivation. They are then presented with four profiles of other players, which are fabricated but presented as real to the player. And these profiles may have more or fewer steps than the player did the previous day, measured via Fitbit. Though not known to the player, they will experience one of three configurations of these profiles each session. Configuration A displays four other profiles that performed worse than the player, facilitating only downward comparisons. B displays two of each, a mixture of upward and downward, and C displays four profiles that all performed better, offering only upward comparison opportunities. The player can select one of the profiles for additional information, prolonging the comparison activity. After they are finished, the player again reports their motivation to engage in PA in a post-test. 
Going back to our psychology theory, we predict that some players will tend to be affected more positively after exposure to upward comparisons, and some will do better when exposed to downward comparisons, depending on their individual SCO. We then formulate this as an MAB problem, where an AI agent will present one of these three arms to the user each day and then observe their resulting steps and self-reported motivation. Higher steps and motivation will reinforce the agent's selection and encourage that arm for that player in the future, while lower steps and motivation will discourage the agent from selecting that arm for that player. Adaptive games and player modeling may always need user studies, but user studies are not always practical for tuning a player model or an AI. In our case, the details of a bandit strategy that make it more effective in specific use cases are not always known in advance. And yet, it is very important that we design it correctly. Not only are we limited in our opportunities for user studies, but the agent will be responsible for administering the intervention within our study and will therefore have a direct impact on any outcomes. To address this, we explore a variety of potential bandit strategies via simulation. Using simulated players that exhibit behaviors reflecting what we expect of real players, we were able to adjust and ultimately establish confidence in our AI agent prior to deploying it in the user study. But there was a two-fold challenge in creating these simulated players in a way that would be useful for evaluating our AI. First, we needed a method for generating steps that reflected the data we would expect from human players. Second, we needed to provision the simulated players with a representation for SEO that reacted to comparison events. For the first challenge, we leveraged existing daily human step behavior data obtained from a mechanical Turk study by Ferberg and others in 2016. Shown here is a histogram of that data set overlaid with a probability density function of a fitted gamma distribution, from which our step generator would randomly draw to generate initial daily steps. Our second challenge, the SCO representation, consisted of a data model to portray the individual traits of the simulated player and a behavior model that determined how the simulated player reacted to social comparison events. Our data model consisted of two parameters, U and D, which represented the simulated player's respective affinity toward upward and downward comparison on a linear scale. This reflects the design of an SCO instrument used in psychology research, the Iowa-Netherlands Comparison Orientation Measure, or INCOM. These two parameters then dictate SCO traits through derivative metrics. Directional preference is the proportion between U and D, and the intensity of reaction to a comparison event is modeled as the magnitude of the respective value. The SEO behavior model directs a simulated player's behavior when presented with a programmatic version of the exercise we intended to deploy to our human players. The simulated players were programmed to select one of the four profiles at random, weighted by their U and D values. Their choice then modified their steps and self-reported motivation based on the magnitude of their parameters. So how does the AI agent react in response to these simulated players? Many bandit strategies exist, and we chose some of the more popular ones to test against our simulation. Epsilon Greedy will select the arm that has historically performed the best, except for a certain percentage of the time designated by Epsilon, where the strategy will randomly explore another arm. Epsilon decreasing is similar, but with a decaying Epsilon value. And the upper confidence bound, or UCB1 algorithm, considers the average and standard deviations of past rewards for each arm and chooses the arm with the greatest potential reward. We also ran variants of Epsilon Greedy and Epsilon Decreasing that incorporated a regression oracle, discussed in further detail in another paper. In short, rather than using the mean of past rewards to predict future values for an arm, we set up a linear regression model that includes the chosen arm as a feature. We perform three sets of experiments on our simulator, each consisting of a series of trials in which a given strategy guided the experience for a simulated player through a 21-step period, reflecting our anticipated three-week user study. The rewards received by the strategy were averaged across all trials at each step to create a time series that we could then graph to visualize their relative performance. Some of these strategies require a special parameter to be tuned for optimal performance, such as the exploration constant C used in the UCB1 algorithm. Therefore, our first simulator experiment was a battery of tests exploring various values of C and epsilon to discover where each strategy was best tuned for our expected user scenario. Note that finding the proper values for these parameters is critical to the performance of the AI, but doing so would not have been possible in a live user study. Our second simulator experiment ran trials for each of UCB1, Epsilon Decreasing, and Epsilon Greedy strategies using the optimized parameters. The results, shown here, suggest that UCB1 holds an advantage over the others tested so far. Our third simulator experiment was exploratory, investigating two techniques for so-called short horizon bandits, namely the regression oracle mentioned previously, as well as a forced exploration period 
that establishes a statistical baseline for each arm up front. The results are shown here, revealing that the regression oracle variants were especially effective in the case of our scenario, even outperforming UCB1. We use these simulator experiments to determine our Bannock configuration for the user study, an epsilon decreasing strategy with a regression oracle and a forced exploration period of nine steps. We then deployed it in a user study, where participants logged onto a web application each day to view profiles, report their motivation, and so on, as described earlier. 53 participants enrolled, and of the 48 who completed the three-week study, 23 were in the experimental condition where the AI agent chose the profile configuration each day, and 25 were in a control condition where the configuration was selected at random. Results are shown in this table, where participants in their control group saw an average of 42 extra steps on the days of their sessions, compared to 160 extra steps for participants in the experimental group. This was not found to be significant, but it perhaps represents a trend. However, the change in motivation before and after the comparison activity did demonstrate a statistically significant difference in favor of the experimental group. The results of our user study, both the increase in steps and the statistically significant increase in self-reported motivation, suggest that our bandit-driven intervention was more effective than random assignment when selecting effective social comparison targets for users. This also supports our approach of defining a player modeling problem as an MAB problem and solving it with bandit techniques, and we believe that this could be a promising approach for adaptive games. Finally, in this research, we promote the use of simulations when designing an AI-based intervention, which allows rapid exploration of the potential options for the AI prior to a more resource-intensive user study, with a focus on designing virtual players that exhibit the salient qualities anticipated in real human players, researchers can gain better insight for their AI's design. Once again, I am Robert C. Gray, and speaking on behalf of my co-authors, thank you very much for your interest and your time today. We are also grateful to the National Science Foundation for helping to fund this work. Please feel free to reach out with any questions or comments, and I look forward to hearing from you.